What's up geeks and welcome back! And don't worry, your signal is okay and your device is properly working. This is just because today we bring you up these divas from different retro animes. So, this video is in collaboration with... Dolly Mixtures, Dolly Crafter, Telly Dollies, Jackie O, The Hatter Dolls and Stafoodle. The links to their channels will be down below. And the diva I chose is no other than Athena, from one of my all-time favorite animes, San Seiya, also known as Knights of the Zodiac in English and Los Caballeros del Zodiaco in Español. The reason I chose her is pretty obvious, I think, like, she's stunning, just look at her. And honestly, I always wanted to make San Seiya doll, so I think this is a good start, in my opinion. So after this short introduction, let's get down to business. I chose to work on a current doll again, but this time I changed her original body for a Disney Descendant one. Just because I think these proportions fits her way better. Also, she was already rooted with this hair, which I think is just perfect for Athena. Like, I honestly believe this doll's destiny was to become her. Also, her face is so pretty. I think these dolls are perfect for manga and anime characters. So, let's wrap her up. And now she's ready for the face-off. But before that, we need of course to erase the factory paint using 100% pure acetone. And let's seal the face three times using Mr. Super Clear. Once done, I just look for some reference pictures to guide me while repainting her. I prepare my setup for this doll's face-off. Well, yeah, it's time to start. As usual, I will start sketching the face using a lighter watercolor pencil. This doll brand has molded on eyes, so I'm trying to use them as a guide. I'm really happy I got this doll for this collab, because I always wanted to see how current dolls would look like rocking some anime eyes. In my opinion, they are the pet fair dolls for this type of characters, and I'm happy I had this opportunity to work on them again. The blushing will be very subtle and minimal this time, just because this being an anime character I really don't want so much depth in her face, you know, just to keep the cartoon style. Let's add some Per X Micro Powder just because I like that sparkling skin. Also, it fits her well because she's a goddess after all. So, I'm starting to add some color using my watercolor pencils but something unexpected happened. The thing is, I had this face-off planned for that day and everything was going well until it started raining. The weather just turned into a humid and wet mess and as you know that might affect the seal and quality so my pencils were not working at all and I just decided to go with acrylics. Which I actually have mentioned here before, I love actual paint-based face-ups, yes, they are a little bit more difficult because Using acrylics you have very little room for mistakes, but well, that's the challenge, right? Also, you can achieve so vibrant colors, so why not? So, Athena, or Saori Kido, which is her human name, she always has this serious expression like, it's hard to tell sometimes what she's actually thinking or feeling, and I was trying to go for that look on my face off. Like, she's always unbothered by everything and everyone. Yeah, she's a little bit cold, but I think that's because of her divine nature. I have always thought it's really interesting how in this anime the gods need a human body to be in this world. Like, their essence is immortal, but their bodies are not. It's weird because the human that has awakened as a god still keeps all the human memories and feelings, but it has also the god's way of thinking. It's like the god's mind and the human's mind both fuse together inside a human body. I don't know, I find this concept to be very different and well yeah, you can tell, I really love to geek about weird stuff on my videos. It's really a shame that Sanseya never got popularity in United States because I know in Latin America and in Europe it was quite a phenomenon and still has a huge fandom till this date. 
I think the lack of popularity in USA was because the anime wasn't aired in the original release year which was 1986, but years later, in the 90s. I have read it was mainly because they had trouble with all the religious references they have on this anime. And finally, when they decided to air it, it was the 90s, and by that time, the animation looked dated compared to the rest of the 90s animes and also the English dub was terrible, completely a mess. And there you have it. That's why this classic beloved by millions all around the globe remains pretty unknown in the United States. So getting back to this face off, I think I really achieved the look and expression I was looking for. I think I was not going to be able to neutralize uh, this doll's original smile face, but I think I got it. For the catch lights, I'm gonna go and try to recreate this anime signature catch light style. And yeah, this moment is always so satisfying to me because these tiny white dots can really bring a face up to look alive. It's a little bit stressing as well, not gonna lie. Let's spread some final layer of Pearl X Micro Powder. And now we're done with the face up. I'm really in love how she turned out despite the rainy day ruining part of the face up process. Here you can see a before and after. And I really can't wait to see her with her hair down. Oh my gosh, she looks so beautiful. I always knew these dolls had good potential for anime and manga girls. So now let's move on to her outfit. I'm gonna start making the top of her dress, which is a very classy and minimal design, very Mary Monroe style. I honestly think this type of dress is timeless. I'm also gonna be using the sewing machine a lot, because for the last month he's been just collecting dolls and really, Hand sewing is great for dolls and stuff, but sometimes I just want to make it look more professional and you know, that's when your sewing machine skills come into play. I'm trying the sash on her and it fits her like a glove. So now let's work on the sleeves. As you can see, this dress is pretty relaxing to put together and you know, I usually don't enjoy sewing at all, but this one, I loved it. She's looking like a Mortal Kombat ninja now, but just for a short time, because I will be gathering the sleeves. Once the top is done, it's time for the big deal, the skirt, which is gonna be huge and super dramatic. So I'm just attaching the skirt to the body. Now let's pin the bottom of the skirt to make a hem. And we're done with her dress. I'm really proud I made this dress only using the sewing machine. I know it's pretty simple but so elegant. Also, I couldn't help myself. I knew I had to do this. It feels so, so good. So now let's move on to the accessories. A lot of people was asking for a link to buy this bag of clay. And I need to say, these specific big ones are not available anymore. So, once I run out of this one, I will have to go back to the little color bags again. But they are the same clay, just with colors. But for the moment, I need to use this one first. I already made the bodies of camera. 
I swear, I was just testing and it turned out so good that I didn't want to repeat it again. So I'm gonna use this one and I'll continue the work from here. I want to say I had other options for this collab. I thought of making Seiya himself, but I preferred to save him for later as I still can't find a good doll base for him. I also thought of making Sapphire the Princess Knight. She has a special place in my heart because so many reasons, I don't even know where to start. If I ever make her as a doll, I will explain why. I also thought of making Astro Boy because he's such a part of my childhood, but I'm glad in the very end, I went for Athena. Do you guys think I should return to this anime and make more Sanseya dolls? Which saint would you like to see the next? I know, I should have started with making Seiya, but Athena is so pretty. Honestly, I think that's her only job, being pretty? I don't know, for being a goddess, sometimes she just got on my nerves, and her choices during the story are somehow questionable. I'm almost done with all the accessories. And as you can see, working with this clay is always so relaxing. Minimal effort is required, and I'm here for it. Now all the accessories are done and cured. And it's time for the paint job. I primed them in yellow for the gold paint to work better and easier. This way basically just takes one coat, which I always appreciate. Using watered down black paint, I will create a patina to accentuate the golden accessories and make them look like actual metal. Now it's time for some jewels. To glue them, I will use E6000, because you know, that thing is really really strong. I'm using a pin and UV resin for the hair accessory. And now we have everything ready. The repainted the doll, the scepter, the tiny little golden accessories, the dress, and I painted the original body heels in gold. So let's dress her up. And now we're done. And here you can see all these beautiful and badass divas. So don't forget to check the videos of Dolly Mitchers, Dolly Crafter, Telly Dollies, Jackie O, The Hatter Dolls, and Stefoodle. And now it's time to enjoy Athena in her full glory.
so well guys, thank you so much for watching to here. Don't forget to like and drop your comment. If you like my content and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Also, spread the word and share this video. Halloween is just around the corner. Until the next time, bye!